humanos, Brasil. They say it's a effort, a good thing because of Brazil can't take it anymore. They can't take the uh, climate change, the deforestation, the violation of human rights. Well, welcome to the show. Pull up a chair. Thanks for joining me. Let's have a chat about Lula today. Lula, I'm coming for you. Hard and ferociously. Lula, you're in my crosshairs. One thing that I can't stand more than anything else is a liar who goes against the poor, and that would be our ex-friend Luda, a major liar married to a tranny woman. Luda is not what we think he is, so let me pull up these files. What I'm going to be doing today is, um, this. since the days when Archie was here, I have this kid who uploads, who's very nice, very good, but we have communication issues. In the last show, I did it in segments, so they kind of all kind of ran together. <laughs> so I have some little clips that I'll play in between so there's no confusion over what I'm saying or not. We're just the down and dirty version here. So I have three things to talk about today. One is about dams in general. I thought I was done with dams, but boy, I'm not even close to being done. And I'm not even close to being done with Lula, okay? I want to talk about dams in Nebraska, which will help you to look for dams in your own area. And more about Lula and why this is such a, I mean, this, this dam thing <laughs> is, it's off the charts, okay? I mean, off the charts in the impact, and it is hiding right there in plain sight. So let me open up this first file to mungle through, okay? Okay, this one is about, um, okay, um, because there's also these things about dams in the world that generate the highest amount of electricity, and you can look for them, 21 dams, and 21 dams in the world that generate the highest amount of electricity. And it's an interesting clip because you can find it over on YouTube because um, it just shows a staggering amount of these huge, monstrous, and I'm not going to play the clip because you really need to look at these dams for yourself, okay? Because I'm more convinced today than I was yesterday or the couple days ago when I did the last show about dams that dams are a hundred percent about eugenics okay take away the water and you take away the people right so um, I've only done some spot checking at the dams and they have a ton of issues okay they have seismic activities before and after dams they have reservoir problems they have geological risk the big issue the sediment I talked about the sediment in the past but the sediment is a monster monster issue okay so, Lula. Why am I talking about Lula today? Because Lula is no bueno. Um, just so you know, I did study Spanish as a kid, and we weren't part of the boomer culture. We weren't raised swearing, okay? Our parents did not swear in front of us. As a matter of fact, the only time I remember getting on restriction was when I got caught swearing. <laughs> and my mom made me go on restriction for a week, and then she felt sorry for me. I was outside playing jump rope on my own, and she felt sorry for me and cut me loose. But yeah, that was, swearing was not good, okay? But today, I will be swearing. And I remember, because remember, I used to work in marketing. Part of what I did was create the three-dimensional thing, the trade show exhibit and whatever we were going to be doing to sell that marketing thing, right? But I worked in three-dimensional work, right? So part of that, I had to go on site to work with the crews, you know, the forklift drivers. So I went from working with the executives to the forklift drivers. Like the forklift drivers, probably a little bit more in common with them. But anyway, so that was my range of people that I dealt with, right? And so, yeah, I did I did learn to use some pretty graphic words, okay? And I would have to say that Lula is a peachy cabron. <laughs> you figure out what that means, okay? <laughs> so here's the deal. And Lula, in his last term, he actually started a big dam. He pushes dams. He pushes nuclear, okay? And I have some quotes from Lula here, but I'll be getting to them, okay? These are just three files, okay? Besides inundating large tracts of rainforest, dams in the lowland areas like much of Amazon are generally ecologically insufficient because large tracts of forest are flooded due to the flatness of the basin and killing off local wildlife. The dam 
clams have the effect of destroying aquatic, aquatic habitats and affecting fish populations, displacing indige indigenous people and adding carbon to the atmosphere. And I had it all wrong. I thought this fish thing was just kind of something kind of crazy, but no, it's actually a pretty big deal. Um, because you take away the fish from indigenous people downstream from this dam, and it is a huge, huge deal. It's kind of, kind of like murdering them kind of deal, right? Cutting off their food deal. Okay, dam expansion, and this is all has to do with that area there, okay, and the Amazon. Despite vocal objections to many dams from civil society and increased awareness among traditional lenders, well, like the World Bank, the number of planned dam projects in tropical regions is growing. On the Mekong, M-E-K-O-N-G alone, one of tropical Asia's biological richest rivers, some 11 dams are planned by 2030, while 77 hydroelectric projects are in the works for the Mekong Basin. Meanwhile, some 150 dams are planned in the Amazon Basin. And I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of, oh, there's, there's 10 of them going in here, 20 of them going in here. You just need to get the big picture, okay? Amazon is getting big into the dam business, okay? And um, let me go on here. Dams alter ecosystems. Water is life. And since dams block water, that impacts life downstream, both for ecosystems and people. In case of the Grand Ethiopian Resistance Dam, or GERD, which I talked about in the last show, which is being filled in Ethiopia <coughs> and is said to be Africa's largest source of hydroelectric power, Egypt is concerned it will receive less water for things like agriculture. <coughs> now, here's the thing. That, you know, that GERD place in Africa is going to take all those years to fill. Well, people are now in a severe drought. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't they stop this filling plan and give those people water for their crops? Probably not that simple. But all I'm saying is that on one hand, they're filling this big dam to help them down the road a few years down the road. Meantime, severe drought's going on. Doesn't add up, now, does it? I mean, it adds up to being eugenics. Um, so the outlook so far, with, with more than 50,000 Ethiopians still living without, without electricity. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, transforming the landscape. The reservoir will, it just ruins things, okay? And let me get back to the good stuff here. Not the good stuff, but, you know, the real stuff. Here's where we get into trouble. I've talked about sediment in, in lakes in the past, okay? I did a clip. I don't know, in the last year about the water concerns, the water system all over the world are low, okay? <clears throat> so what happens when you get a low water system? Well, you get a lot of sediment, okay? And what's in that sediment? Well, basically, in a nutshell, all the crap that's been brewing above in that water for all these years, right? So you got probably 100 years or more of sediment in the bottom, right? Highly toxic stuff. So what, ha what happens with dams that make them so bad for the fish, now that I understand it? What happens is, is that a dam traps the sediment. Everybody down the stream needs that sediment, and I'll be getting into more of the nutrients in a minute here. So trapping that sediment makes the soil worthless, okay? So um, rivers carry sediment that feeds the fish. It feeds the entire vegetation along the river. So when you stop sediment flowing freely down the streams, you have a dead river. And ecosystems may have adapted to natural floodings, which dams take away. So they're just, uh, there's just this thing about, go look for yourself. I mean, everywhere I look, they were like, hey, new plans for redoing some more rivers. Hey, we're going to not block these rivers anymore. <laughs> so, there's a lot going on with the waterways, okay? Mega dams also have a large footprint on land upstream. Aside from displacing human communities, flooding to create a reservoir also kills plants and leaves animals to drown or find new homes. And here's the thing, because I've talked, oh, I don't know, I I've talked about Hetch Hetchy in California half a dozen times, okay? Hetch Hetchy was a magnificent place, said to be the most beautiful place in this entire country, okay? There was a fight over access to the Hetch Hetchy water in the early 1900s, right before the San Francisco earthquake. 
What happened was they wanted to access the Hetch Hetchy water. They wanted to flood the Hetch Hetchy Valley and get the water for San Francisco. They wanted to create that dam there, okay? Well, there was a lot of opposition to that dam. Well, what happened next? Well, next they have the San Francisco earthquake. See how everything, what they do is they'll flood an area and then say, oh, well, it's flooded, so now we need dams, right? Oh, well, there was a fire, but they started, but now we need more fire trucks, right? So what happened was, was that they created the San Francisco earthquake with dynamite, did a whole show about it already. It was a robbery, okay? Those people living in San Francisco were in fact robbed, okay? They had 30 minutes or maybe 10 minutes to leave their homes with one bag, okay? They were forced out of their homes by gunpoint, okay? Gunpoint, they were forced out of their homes. And then what happened then? Well, they blew the dynamite and the reporters at the time were saying stuff like they made mistakes. No, they didn't make mistakes. They were throwing dynamite into fires and creating more explosions. So yeah, so they created the earthquake and then right after that they got access to Hetch Hetchy. So right after that they dammed up Hetch Hetchy, the most beautiful place on the earth. And I have been thinking all this time, why did they do that to Hetch Hetchy besides being psychopaths, right? Well, because they destroyed the soil system in that entire area. And that soil system would be something people would rely on to grow crops. So at the base of this whole damn thing, the scam, okay, is to pollute the water and also to make sure that we don't have decent enough soil to grow any kind of crop. See how this will all work out? Okay, so let me get down here a bit. So, um, dams reduce biodiversity and cause extension. Yes, we know all that, um, but I'll give you some numbers because I was so wrong on the fish. <laughs> Aquatic species, particularly fish, are vulnerable to the impact. And also, somebody came up with, in some country, <laughs> to, to fix the fish problem. They actually, and this is serious, they want to install these aquatic ladders for fish to use to escape the dam. <laughs> I wish I was making this up, but I'm not, okay? Okay, um, aquatic species, okay. Okay, so this person, Moran, said the... Atapu, I-T-A-I-P-U dam, which was constructed on the border between Paraguay and Brazil in the 1970s and 1980s, resulted in a 70% loss of biodiversity. So on the Tucuri Dam, T-U-C-U-R-I-A dam, that was built in the 80s in the Amazon, there was a 60% drop in productivity of fish. Many fish species rely on the ability to move about freely in a river. Well, yeah, because they're fish, right? Be it to seek food or return to where they were born. Migratory species are badly affected by the presence of dams. In 2016, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature reported a 99% drop in catches of sturgeons and paddlefish both of which are migratory over a period of three decades. That's a lot of fish, 99%. Overfishing and river alternation were cited as major threats to the species' survival. Well, imagine that. Take away their habitat and they all die. Boy, this is really genius level science stuff, isn't it? A 2018 study predicted that fish stocks on Asia's Mekong, M-E-K-O-N-G River, will drop by 40% as a result of dam projects with consequences not only for biodiversity, but for people whose lives and likelihoods depend on those fish. These stakes for biodiversity are particularly high for animals threatened with extension. So yeah, this rare orangutan, can't get into all the weeds here. As reservoirs fill, upstream forests are flooded, eliminating their function as carbon sinks. As the drowned vegetation decomposes, decaying plants in man-made reservoirs release methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. This makes reservoirs sources of emissions, particularly those in tropical forests. See, what they're doing, same thing with all this nuclear stuff, <laughs> they just lunge ahead, right? Tropical forests where there is dense growth. It is estimated that greenhouse gas emissions from dams amount to about a billion tons annually, making it a significant global source. And, in the, and it, as the climate changes, 
More frequent and prolonged droughts mean dams will couch capture less water, resulting in lower electricity production. Countries depend on hydro countries dependent on hydropower will be especially vulnerable as temperatures keep rising. And like I always say, that's the plan, not the bug in the system, right kids? So yeah, I mean there is you could go on if you write down some of these words and you could be spend the next few weeks exploring dams. I have been exploring them to the point that I am like I never had any idea that dams would be their method of eugenics, okay? Dams reduce water quality, and this is key. Man-made reservoirs trap fertilizers that run into the water from surrounding land. In addition, in some developing countries, sewage bleh, flows directly into the reservoirs. Bleh. I know in Mexico they dump sewage into the ocean because when I was down in that area, there's lots of times they close it off the beaches in San Diego because of the raw sewage. <laughs> That's what you have to look for. If you don't get these people under control, then look forward to drinking raw sewage is my suggestion here, okay? Okay, um, I got lost on the sewage part. In some developing countries, sewage flows directly into the reservoirs. This kind of pollution can result in algae blooms that suck the oxygen out of the water, making it acidic and potentially harmful to people and animals. Still water in large man-made lakes is warm at the top and cold at the bottom, which can also affect water quality. While war warm water promotes the growth of harmful algae, the cold water that is often released through turbines from the bottom of a reservoir may contain damaging high mineral concentrations. In some cases, water in man-made reservoirs is of such bad quality that it is not even fit to drink. And then dams waste water. I've already talked enough about all of this stuff. Not going to go there right this second. But here's what this person said. They said, what are the alternatives? The evidence is damning. But if mega dams have so many harmful environmental effects, what are the alternatives? Although some green groups point to hy small hydropower as being ecologically sound, this Moran person is skeptical. He said, a dam is a dam. It's blocking the fish. It's blocking the sediment. And that's all you need to know about dams. That sediment becomes dangerous. Okay, so what happens exactly to the soil? And I learned a new word today. Jot it down, kids. It's called water logging. All one word. W-A-T-E-R-L-O-G-G-I-N-G. What is that, you ask? Well, once you learn that word, which I learned this week, the whole world opens up, okay? Water logging increases the reduction potential of the soil and changes the chemical equilibrium of many elements, which then enter the soil water solution in their ionic forms. Depending on, I, I try to read these words thinking that maybe some of you might be smarter than me and it might make sense, okay? De depending on soil type, this change in chemical equilibrium can include transient toxicities of some soil nutrients that are normally safe when soil is drained. And boy, there's a lot to this water draining because uh, I know in Utah, that Salt Lake is draining and, uh, well, they're saying now there's not a problem because we got some rain. <laughs> well, just watch those snowpacks, okay? Anyhow, so, um, yeah, they're always talking about, well, this isn't going to be a problem. Well, I, I kind of think it's going to be a huge problem. <laughs> I, I kind of think. I wouldn't be spending the time today talking about water logging <laughs> and dams if I didn't see this as a huge problem fucking problem, okay? This is a huge fucking deal that you people better get a handle on, okay? So, water logging occurs whenever the soil is so wet there is insufficient oxygen in the pore space for plant roots to be able to adequate, adequately respire. Other gases detrimental to root growth, such as carbon dioxide and ethylene, also accumulate in the root zone and affect the plants. So if you do any kind of water logging, you get these impacts, okay? But what they're doing is they're water logging <laughs> huge. They're, they're, it, it appears to me, okay, that they're picking out 
huge plots of what would be considered very fertile soil, putting in these dams, and then they get water logging, right? Symptoms and causes. Lack of oxygen in the roots of the plants causes their root tissues to decompose. Usually this occurs from tips of roots, and this causes roots to appear as if they have been pruned. So um, they, they're talking about you can get waterlogged, or in the case of dams, you really get waterlogged, right? Waterlogging can also affect, like in California right now, there's a lake called Tulare Lake. Just check it out. T-U-L-A-R-E. That lake, they drain. <laughs> None of this is funny. It's just so insane, okay? They drained Tulare Lake in California years ago to put in um, agriculture. Well, now, because of the water, the lake is filling up again. And they don't have a clue what that's going to mean to all the surrounding agriculture as Tulare Lake is now refilling. So their actions usually have some pretty deadly consequences for the rest of us, which I'm trying to point out. Okay, um, so yeah. And also, all these floods we have everywhere. Look at Pakistan. Pakistan is not going to have... Now, I'm just guessing here, okay? I'm just making a wild guess. All the flooding that's going on in Pakistan now, then with that crazy deal with the leader there and stuff, they're not going to have any nutrients, okay? Because when they're flooding these countries, why do they flood these countries? What's the big deal besides making their lives miserable, right? Well, floods are a really big deal. Floods transport vital nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic materials to the surrounding land. When the water recedes, it leaves sediment and nutrients behind on the floodplain. This rich natural fertilizer improves soil quality, quality and has a positive effect increasing the ecosystem. But what they're doing, flooding takes all of these things, the nitrogen, all this stuff, and just pushes it off to somewhere else, okay? Um, due to water logging, a part of the soil air moves out into the atmosphere and is displaced by the coming water. It is way too complicated for me to talk about, but if you want to know more about what's going on in countries like Pakistan with why they're flooding those countries, it has to do with this part of water logging, which is not the part that I'm going to be addressing today, okay? i got to stay focused here on the water logging from those dams. <laughs> so if you're wondering more about water damage from floods that's going on all around the world, perpetuated by the U.S. government, look into water logging, the transient impact of water logging, okay? I think it's how we want to look at it. But you need to know that word, water logging. So, um... Uh, continuous water stagnation destroys the soil structure, structure and makes the soil compact. It also affects the <coughs> temperature greatly of the water, uh, availability of nutrients. <coughs> Excuse me. Nitrogen deficiency is extremely common in water. See, I'll read you just a few things because this is all they know, okay? They only know about water logging from certain instances, right? This is not details about water logging from dams. This is about water logging, let's say, from Pakistan after they get flooded, okay? So you have to kind of imagine that water logging over highly fertile soil is going to wipe out all this stuff probably forever, right? Because it wipes out the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium, the sulfur, the zinc, the iron, the magnesium, <laughs> um, salinity. It wipes all that out of the water, okay? Um, out of the soil. Okay, uh, um, well, and then there's also, <clears throat> I'm going to be wrapping up this section here in a second here, um, but I found a really, dis I, 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 I was only able to find certain things, okay, just because I don't have all year to work on dams, although I would certainly like to, but my time is limited, so what I'm trying to do is focus on the absolute most horrific things that I'd like to talk to you about now, okay? <laughs> because, obviously, I'm a black sheep when it comes to social media, so I don't consider my time to be long, okay? So I wasn't able to organize this into, like, real specific dates. I'm just giving you my best shot. My hope in sharing my work is that you will pick it up and do something about it or take it from here, right? This article, 2017... How a dam building boom is transforming the Brazilian Amazon. 
Brazil is in the midst of hydropower construction boom that is inundating large areas of rainforest and driving indigenous people from their lands, all while failing to fully develop the country's vast potential for solar and wind energy. <laughs> <clears throat> well, they're all a lie, so see what I'm saying? They're going to say, well, <laughs> we don't want to do solar or wind, so let's get these dams going. Okay, so uh, because of all this deforestation, um, I'm not going to um, – I would like to say that Lula is a major liar, okay? He said – he narrowly defeated Bolsonaro by saying he was going to help the poor – and his quote is, I am here to say that all of you are on Brazil's back, says the peachy cabron Lula at the United Nations. I think peachy cabron means fucking bastard, but I really don't remember. You all know that we are going to undertake a major fight against deforestation. Already Lula has negotiated the relaunch of an international Amazon fund that once bankrolled, bankrolled conservative projects. He's also <coughs> courting new new donors like the U.S. and Britain. Yes, Lula is their peachy cabron. Peachy, P-I-N-C, cabron, I think is how it says. Okay. And remember, too, when I worked labor crews setting up exhibits and stuff, like if I was in places like Miami, I would have a Cuban crew, right? So they would say all kinds of swear words. One, one of the crews one time, I didn't let them know that I understood what they were saying. And so it was a fun week because as they, the, the setting up the exhibit got more and more complicated and they got kind of upset and angry and they thought that I couldn't understand Spanish. So they spent the week complaining about me. So, <laughs> so the last day I just smiled and spoke to them in Spanish and walked away. But yeah, so I did learn some rather crude words that I will be using today because I'm not a fan of Lula if you haven't figured this out already. I think Lula is the most dangerous little thing walking the earth right now, okay? So he's also courting new donors, including the U.S. and Britain, in a, in a race. Sorry, Marcos is trying to get settled next to me. It's okay. It's okay. They really are fuckers. Gas and a nice little lady like me and her pets into their own home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They, there's a special place in wherever hell is for these people. Okay, so. Okay, these are some key things I need to tell you here so we focus here, okay? Um, in a nod to those on the front line on the of the fight to preserve the Amazon, Lula is also widely expected to s quickly start demarcating indigenous lands again, a process paralyzed by Bolsonaro that is widely, another peachy cabron, that is widely seen as one of the most effective ways of preserving floors. Well, Bolsonaro, they made that deal with, with that beef company, JBS, JBF became the big leader of beef kind of out of nowhere. They're located in Brazil. They were the one. If you, if you want to take this further, they're the ones that have been deforesting. JBS are also financed by uh, BlackRock and all those people. JBS was just caught here in Nebraska um, at a slaughterhouse. Um, JBS was, um, you know, they always hire these outside contractors and stuff. Well, the contractor was hiring children, okay? And anybody in their right mind would know they were hiring children, right? Because the children were 10 years old. Well, I live across from elementary school, and I can tell you that if you put a 10-year-old <laughs> next to an 18-year-old, there's a big difference, okay? So these people have such nerve that they had 10-year-old children working overnight in a slaughterhouse, right? So instead of sleeping, for, get ready for school the next day, they were working in a slaughterhouse owned by these people. Don't let that leave your mind, okay? Think of that little 10-year-old in slaughterhouse gear on a floor covered in blood because of Lula, JBS, the United States government, and all of these people. That is the reason why that little kid, 10 years old, is working all night in a slaughterhouse, okay? Don't ever forget that part, okay? Always connect it to the harm they're doing to the children because they screw with the children and they make more screwed up adults. So, um, yeah. Lula has negotiated the relaunch of an international Amazon fund and freezing more than 500 million in aid. And this is Lula's I would send a message not only to indigenous people, but to anyone worried about the environment. 
it's a unique moment and opportunity, a chance to move forward and reverse the damage. Lula's pledges have fueled hopes at home and abroad, peachy cabron, that he may be able to save the Amazon, nearly two-thirds of which lives lies within Brazil. The rainforest is one of the world's most important carbon sinks, absorbing more than two billion metric tons of atmospheric warming gases per year, but it has lost 10% of its native vegetation over the last four decades, according to a new report. And I did not verify any of these reports. So if you're going to take it from here, double check it all, okay? Stop letting other people be your seeing eye dog is my favorite quote now, okay? We let other people be our seeing eye dogs, and that's why we're here right now, okay? Because we trusted the wrong people, but don't let me get started on that right now. So, um... During his two terms in office between 2003 and 2010, Lula implemented a multi-year plan that slashed deforest... Oh, yeah, I don't care. And then I went on to say, Lula will have to relaunch this plan, looking at what worked well in the past, but also with an eye on the present and the future. But simply reviving these policies dismantled under Bolsonaro, another peachy cabron, may not be enough to curb the destruction this time around. As Lula returns to office, he will face a hostile Congress that includes Bolsonaro allies such as Ricardo Salles, a former environmental minister who resigned last year after being linked to an illegal logging scheme. I think what they're doing too is they have everybody focused on they don't want the Amazon deforested, right? Which is true. No one wants that, right? But what they're going to claim is they're going to need these hydro things because if they're going to give the Amazon a way of life, they're going to need to give them electricity, right? They're going to need to give them the internet, all those tools, right? So that's how they're going to swing around and sell this thing, right? Um, and a powerful farming bloc in Congress could undermine Lula's efforts to advance a green agenda, pushing forward proposals that aim to make deforestation and land grabbing easier. It is essential that these bills don't advance, uh -huh. with Brazil facing a gaping deficit among a painful economic slowdown, Lula will also need to look abroad for fresh sources of cash to fund conservation efforts while convincing lawmakers to remove fiscal barriers that bar him from spending beyond the country's budget. Experts say that perhaps, most urgently, Lula, Pichi Cabron, will have to rebuild the state's capacity to f fight deforestation, bolstering environmental in enforcement agencies that were gutted of staff and resources under Bolsonaro. The government will have to show that things have changed, that Brazil is pushing naked environmental crimes again. No, excuse me. That Brazil is punishing environmental crimes again. Yeah, that sounds great, doesn't it? Still, deep in the Amazon, where many survive off the destruction of the rainforest, conservation remains a tough sell. Illegal mining, land grabbing, and ranching have become engines of economic growth in some forest communities. Here, the appeal of beef and gold and the quick cash they bring is far stronger than greener alternatives. There will be resistance. These activities won't stop overnight because there is a lot of money involved. There was investment in environmental crime. There was investment in environmental crime over the last four years. Well, Lula has offered a different, albeit vague, vision. This it said Lula has offered a different, albeit vague, V A G U E vision. He says communities can earn an income without cutting down trees. Instead, extracting exotic fruit and ingredients for new medicines and luxury cosmetics from the jungle. So, uh, yeah, um, it's the cattle, it's the lies, it's the poor people stuck in the middle. Um, for a long time, there wasn't anything else but cattle here. Um, yeah, I'm going to close off for here with this horror, part of the horror story. Um, I believe it's a plot, and in the next segment, I will come back to, um, <coughs> let me cover the, um, 
Dams in Nebraska, because that'll be a short segment. And Dams in Nebraska will also give you some keys to look around your own area. <coughs> you might want to find out if you have any dam, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, any dams in your own particular area. So let's continue with the chanting for Lula. With the official election of Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva as Brazil's president, eyes are turning towards the country's management of what's sometimes called the Earth slums, the Amazon rainforest. Yes. So I'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back again. I was thinking a little bit about swearing. It's kind of a cultural thing. Um, for example, when I was hired by Intel and moved and relocated to Southern Cal Northern California, the Silicon Valley, um, that was the one thing that really actually shocked me about that whole deal. Um, because I had never been actually, I worked for companies, obviously. I, w I was about 28 or 29 when Intel hired me. And, relocated me from Southern California to Northern California. And that was indeed a kind of a shocking event because when I went to the first corporate meeting with all of the executives, like the people who ran that place, and the language they used and their demeanor toward each other was actually very unsettling to me. Um, yeah, because of just the aggression and the swearing. So maybe I'm talking about swearing today because you know, I'm getting close to leaving this game board, and I don't want to leave you with the impression, because I have been swearing a lot in the last few shows, that I'm just some hardened person who just runs around swearing, which I really don't. Like, I learned those words because a big part of my job would be to take that creation, that trade show booth, and take it to the site and supervise the construction, right? So I would be very clear that I never use those words toward any of the workers, <laughs> I learned them from the crew on site, right? I learned those words from the people working on site. I didn't ever use them on them, but I knew when they would, so when they would be talking, I would know what they were saying, right? Because I studied Spanish, so I had enough rudimentary Spanish from school, so I added those words. But anyway, so let's get to this Nebraska thing, okay? It says, all of a sudden, you've got older dams with a low design criteria that now can potentially cause loss of life if they fail, says this Del Shannon, who is president of U.S. Society on Dams. The number of deficient high hazard dams is increasing, he said, adding that without investment in upgrades, that number will continue to rise. The actual number of high dam, high hazard dams in poor or unsatisfactory condition is likely even higher than the Associated Press's tally, although it's unclear because some states don't really track such data and many federal agencies refuse to release the information. The construction of large dams completely changed the relationship of water and land, destroying the existing ecosystem balance, which in many ca cases has taken thousands of years to create. Currently, there are 40,000 large dams which abstract the world's rivers, completing, changing their circulation system. This is not going to occur without dire environmental impacts. Through, throughout the past few years, the negative impacts of dams have become so well known that most countries, including India, have stopped building them altogether and are now forced to invest their money into fixing the problems created by existing dams. And I'd like to say that I don't know why they point out India, and I'm not pointing out India in specific, okay? <laughs> India is not the problem, okay? <laughs> they always want to point it out like, oh yeah, look, look what India is doing, right? <laughs> well, let's look around at what the United States is doing first before we start casting aspersions toward the dear people in India, right? I think India's had enough punishment under the British regime, so. Okay, um, 
One of the first problems with dams is the erosion of land. We're back at the soil again. Dams hold back the sediment load normally found in a river flow. Depriving, I've talked about this, but I want to keep this intact, okay? In order to make up for the sediments, the downstream water erodes its channels and banks. This lowering of the river bed threatens vegetation and river wildlife. One of the reasons dams are built is to prevent flooding. Pay attention to that, okay? They sold us on this idea that dams, in fact, prevent flooding. However, most ecosystems which experience flooding are adopted and many animal species depend on the floods for various life cycle stages, such as reproduction and hatching. Annual floods also deposit nutrients and replenish wetlands. A major example of soil erosion problem is Aswan Dam, A-S-W-A-N Dam. They're just figuring a lot of this stuff out, right? So um, another thing I'd like to point out about dams that I haven't talked about is the spread of disease. Dam reservoirs in tropical areas, due to their slow movement, are literally breeding grounds for mosquitoes, snails, and flies, the vectors that carry malaria. Scotinosis and river blindness. I've talked about river blindness in Africa in the past. Welcome to river blindness, Brazil, if you start getting a bunch of dams. So yeah, dams in tropical areas are very bad, okay? They say that dams also make changes to the Earth's rotation. Don't know if I believe it, but I'll read what it says. NASA geophysicist Dr. Benjamin Fong Chow found evidence See, they never say what they found, right? Found evidence that large dams cause changes to the Earth's rotation because of the shift of water weight from oceans to reservoirs. Because of the number of dams which have been built, the Earth's daily rotation has apparently sped up eight millionths of a second since 1950. Chow said it was the first time human activity has been shown to have a measurable effect on the Earth's motion. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Okay, so um, sedimentation is a huge deal, huge, 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 huge deal, so big. In the process of, by which large sedimentation of water entering a reservoir are deposited in the upper end forming a delta and steadily rising the level of the upper reaches of the reservoir. This causes flooding due to the bank water effect and in the case of the Sadar, it's the S A A, excuse me, S A R D A R, S A R O V A R dam. This process shortens the utility of the dam. So there's all these issues with dams, okay? And let's get to the water logging. Um, they say, and I, I went further looking into more water logging before I get to this Nebraska business. Um, so now I don't know this for a fact, okay? But it appears to me that there's a focus on getting rid of the most fertile soil. Just taking a wild guess here, okay? Rich soils in the states of Punjab and Haryana have been robbed for their use because of water logging. So yeah, the institute, and you see, when you're looking at something like they're doing for these dams, you have to look at other things they're doing because I don't think anybody's gonna be really talking specifically about the impact of dams and water logging, right? <laughs> I just happened to run into water logging when I was cruising around, so. Um, so um, he goes into this whole thing, but it's not worth it for us to talk about it right now. But it, but it has a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Change in the salt regimen, the whole ecosystem. Um, they take forest land. It, ju it just trashes everything, okay? I, I think we kind of get the picture, right? So there was a thing I do want to talk about. Dams and their effect on forests and tribal people. When asked to name different causes of deforestation, few people will mention hydroelectric dams as being one of them. Even fewer will include them as a cause of human rights violations. However, dams constitute a major direct and indirect cause of forest loss, and most of them have resulted in widespread human rights abuses. This lack of awareness can be explained by the fact that for many years, large hydroelectric dams have been portrayed as synonymous with development. And also I had this weird thought that I had the other day. Dams look like 
purity, right? Clear, pure water, all that kind of stuff. And then you position that against coal, really dark, evil coal. <laughs> yeah. there, there's something to all this psychology, okay? Um, so, yeah, and th there's just a lot here. There's just a lot here. Um, and it went on to say, I'm just going to pick out some more things here. I would certainly hope that if you're in any of these regions, you would go take a look, okay? Take a look. This needs all of our eyes. Stop letting other people be your seeing eye dog. Even me. Go check it out, okay? So, because I kept getting more and more suspicious about the water, the, 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 the soil, right? Like, I got past the thinking about dams, and I thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This all ties into Hetch Hetchy, right? At first, I thought, well, maybe they're just destroying things because they're psychopaths, right? So they see a be big, beautiful area, and their first their first response is, ah, let's just destroy it, right? But no, it's it's deeper than that. It's And then the lights went off my head. It's about the soil. The soil is what we need to have food. So not only are the best agriculture soils flooded by the reservoir, but major changes occur in the environment where the river's flora and fauna begins to disappear with strong impacts on people dependent on those resources. At the same time, dams imply a number of health hazards, starting with diseases introduced by the thousands of workers that are brought in to build the dams. And ending with diseases relating to the reservoir itself, malaria, this it's a S C I S T O S O M I A S I S, and river blindness. And don't forget, look at that show I did about the Carters and their destruction in Africa. They have, I realize that I'm not talking about Brazil and not Africa, okay? <laughs> but, but the Carters are in Africa giving people river blindness and those worms, right? Because they even had a memento of the worms sitting on Jimmy Carter's desk and right outside of his window. So the Carters have been bringing river blindness to Africa, and it looks to me like dams will also increase river blindness, right? In far too many cases, dam building has resulted in widespread human rights. I didn't get that. As most of the world, local peoples have persistently resist, resisted the destruction of their homelands and their forced resettlement. So, I don't know. I, I would have to say that stop having heroes. Don't trust any of these people. Um, because, you know, I saw a picture of Lula after he's saying Brazil is back, um, holding hands with the head, um, head environmentalist person that's supposedly on our side in Brazil. Don't trust anybody, okay? Maybe they're completely trustworthy, okay? But you for sure can't trust Lula, so do you really trust his environmental people that he's cozying up next to? And I had this, I took this diversion, which I'll explain to you, because they were talking about snails in the water. <laughs> I never thought about snails, <laughs> really. Um, and so, so I looked up snails, and snails is how you get that schizomotion disease that I couldn't pronounce, okay? <laughs> so that's why I'm a big encourager. I am so happy. It is really great to be ending your life. <laughs> not, it's not great to be doing it in a painful way like this, okay? I'm not trying to fluff coat this thing. <laughs> and, but being engaged with something is certainly a better way to go and to fight the pain, right? So I got off on this little sidetrack. <laughs> it was a good sidetrack, actually, because they mentioned snails, but no one mentioned that snails were the ones that caused this disease. So I'll, I'll tell you what I found, okay? Snails can pose a health risk because they're talking about snails being in the sediment and stuff, okay? If they carry a parasitic disease called schizomyosis, that's S-C-H-I-S-T-O-S-O-M-I-A-S-I-S, -S, which infects nearly 250 million people. Wow, those snails, big deal, right? Mostly in Asia, Africa, and South America. Um, so yeah, dam reservoirs, due to their slogan, are breeding grounds for mosquitoes, snails, and flies. See. Snails, mosquitoes, and flies are called vectors, V-E-C-T-U-R-S. And once you know these words, the world opens up. So yeah, shkoshkimosa. And the, now, I don't know if shkoshkimosa is the same as river blindness, okay? I'm a little bit confused, but I think it does, okay? 
Okay, there are several common contaminants, blah, 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 parasites, viruses. Okay, um, a lot of um, heavy metals are found in dams. Okay, let me go through this. Here again, heavy metals can accumulate at the bottoms of dams. That sediment, pay attention to that sediment. All these dams are running out of water, so that sediment is a big, big deal. Dams can contain a variety of sediments. Contaminants, excuse me. Some contaminants can come from organic material washed into dams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pollutants in dams. Well, they've already said that they have uranium in all water systems, so wouldn't that logically include the dams? They said that plastics are in all U.S. water systems, so wouldn't that logically include the dams? Do I really have to look? <laughs> dams provide a lot of benefits to society, certainly, but not so much to the actual waterways. We have been building dams all over the place for the last 5,000 years, relentlessly and unstoppably. These days, we are building them taller and larger than ever before. The world's current biggest dam, the Hydroelectricity Three Gorges Dam, and boy, that thing filled with problems, okay? And a new structure planned for the vast River Congo's Ingra, I-N-G-R-A, waterfalls in Africa could surpass this. So go look up the River Congo's Ingra waterfalls, okay? So, um, with the ability to generate twice as much hydroelectricity as its Chinese counterpart, I kind of think, you know how they have those big phallic symbols all over the place because these men, the 1% men, don't really have penises? I, I think this is kind of a phallic symbol thing, right? It's like, who can have the big phallic symbol in front of their building? It's kind of like, um, in all these countries, they're building, like, who can have the biggest building, right? Are dams also part of that macho, let's have the biggest dam? Um, I, just a thought. Um, and also, um, there's this big deal now going on with um, Europe's rivers. They're talking about damming Europe's rivers. And um, because they've got all these screwy things going on, you have to really go look for yourself, okay? Because every country has something crazy going on with the way that they captured the dam, captured the rivers, re-diverted them, came up with these dams. <laughs> I think you get my point. Um, problems of dams. Dams can break. People may have to relocate. Construction costs are quite high. Construction takes a long time. Significant maintenance and adjustments required, and that's where they fall off the trail here, right? Because they never seem to keep track of the maintenance, so they're all, that's why the dams all over the world are falling apart. Experts needed to control water flows, which they clearly don't have because they just randomly just flood places, right? Sedimentation patterns are changed. Huge deal. Problems for the aquatic life. Huge deal. Slowing down water flows may lead to excessive algae, deforestation, methane production, ecological imbalance. Some people may be cut off from water flows. Challenges and conflicts in times of drought may become a political tool. Well, hot damn, that sounds like damn snow, doesn't it? That's what I'll use instead of being a vile, swearing person. Except for I might have a few more words for Lula here down the road, but hot damn is my new swear word. Okay. Dams can break. From the previous analysis, it has become clear <laughs> that there are many upsides related to dams and then they can be quite important and useful in certain regions. However, dams also simply have downsides. For instance, nothing is perfect and through construction or maintenance mistakes, dams can eventually break. Okay, um, and then I look and I'll get into the Nebraska stuff before I get to the next segment here, okay? You can find the list of dams in your area. And I think we need to spend more time looking, looking for ourselves, right? I looked at, I found, just look for an interactive map of dams, okay? And you will, in fact, find it, okay? And I have, let me see here. So I looked at some maps. I looked at this interactive map, and lo and behold, <laughs> right next to my town, I have some very dangerous dams. I don't know exactly how dangerous because I haven't slowed down to really look into them further. Hey, I'm dying. That's the benefit of dying, right? What do I really care, right? Well, I care because I care, right? So I would encourage you to look around your area, okay? Because I have a couple. I have one called the Skyview Lake Dam, which they consider high hazard. What exactly does that mean? Well, I don't know yet. 
I have another one called the Willow Creek Dam. So if you're in Nebraska, check those out. Let me know if you find anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, the thing about these areas in Nebraska and stuff is that all of these dams are typically put in where us working class live, right? Just like those trains. <laughs> are those trains and these dams, and this is just an imagination and a comment on my point, okay? It appears to me, and maybe I'm having a wild imagination here, it appears to me that dams are not only to destroy the soil to the point that probably could never be revived, right? Once you've got a dam, <laughs> all that water over that soil. Now remember, I'm not an engineer, not a scientist, but I do have common sense. And if you dam up water, like let's say all the soil underneath the Hoover Dam, okay? Well, all that soil under that dam, let's say everybody gets together and decides, oh, we don't want any more dams, let's get rid of them. <laughs> well, good luck in that execution. But anyway, so let's say they get rid of them. I'm gonna guess, okay? And remember, I'm just guessing. I'm gonna guess that the degradation of that soil under that dam, even if they got rid of the dam, would be worth nada, zero, zilch. So I believe this is to get rid of the way that anybody on this game board could possibly try to engage in, oh, I don't know, let's say growing crops to sustain themselves, right? Or having water to drink. So they've got us covered in two ways. They have been polluting all of our lakes and stuff with dioxins and stuff, and now we know a little bit more about dams. So I will... Um, I don't think I'll do another segment on this. I think what I'll do is just roll into the next one. Um, that was Dams Blue. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I didn't talk about this one. Okay. I only had three files open. You would have thought I would have closed the ones I was done with, but I didn't. Um, okay, let me close that one so I don't get it. Okay. Let me get to Lula here. Okay. Okay. During his presidency, he expanded social welfare programs, including a vast family assistance program, raised the minimum wage, grew the economy, and expanded trade. His programs are estimated to have lifted millions of Brazilians out of poverty and grow the country's middle class. And what have I been saying forever? This is this is a rigged game and how it works, they build up false hope so they can crush them to the ground, right? Smash them down. And it always goes a hope despair cycle, hope despair cycle, hope despair cycle, right? He was known oh wait a minute. Million lifting millions of Brazilians out of poverty, okay? And growing the country's middle class. That was Lula, that peachy cabron. Okay. Oh, wait, I was going to say something else. What was I going to say? Hot damn, that was Lula. He was known as a pragmatic negotiator, helping to expand foreign markets for Brazilian goods such as meat and soybeans. Former President Barack Obama once called him one of the most popular politicians on earth. I would be freaked out if any of them said anything good about me. Well, they obviously aren't saying anything good about me. I'm being, being killed. But the country's constitution prohibited Lula from running for a third term, and he helped elect his former energy minister and close ally, Dilama Rousseff, as president. She would become the country's first female president. So he couldn't get the third time. So he got his close person, who happened to be a former energy minister. Well, gee, who runs who who runs dams and stuff? Isn't that the foreign energy? Isn't that the energy minister? Despite his popularity, his presidency was marred by a number of public scandals, including rel revelations the Workers' Party was paying a monthly bribe to political officials called Operation Car Wash. Just write that down. Operation Car Wash, a multi-year criminal investigation into dealings of the state-owned oil company, Petrobras, along with dozens of individuals in public and private sectors. And that was Lula. Now, I'm not saying that this was true or not, right? This is just how it works, right? <laughs> because that's how, they, that's how they get the guy to go from being the underdog to the upper dog, right? 
it's just this is such simple mental manipulations that I have a hard time being around people that really can't grasp this, right? He was convicted, let me see. Uh, do, he was convicted on charges of corruption and money laundering and eventually arrested in 2018. Luda maintained he was innocent. Well, of course he did. He spent a year and a half in prison, probably in some luxury suite, before his charges were annulled in 2021 by a Supreme Federal Court decision that found the judge in the case had been biased against him. And also, Glenn Greenwald was somewhere in, infected. If you don't realize, you know, the whole group of the 40-year-olds, the Glenn Greenwalds, the Jimmy Doors, the, all those people, all those people are in on the deal, right? They all believe that, they, all, they also all believe that, um, Assange is really locked up. They also really believe that JFK was really murdered because they're all banding it behind RFK Jr. who's coming out and saying, the, the CIA killed my father and killed my uncle. <laughs> well, please don't even get me started on how that's going, okay? Now, JFK is rising in popularity because he's the black sheep. These people do not know what it is to be the black sheep. Trust me. Unless you're the black sheep, you don't know what it's really all about, okay? The country's constitution, yeah, I already read that part, okay. Um, spent a year and a half in prison, got out. He tried, Lula tried to run for president in 2018, but a court denied his candidacy due to his imprisonment. And that's when Bolsonaro won, okay. Um, he would go on to serve as the leader of a steelworkers union helping to organize strikes during the military rule in the late 1970s. Quite a guy, right? In 1980, he helped found the National Political Party, the Workers' Party, alongside other union leaders, politicians, organizers, intellectuals. And what did I say about the 1970s in this country? It was when they flipped everything over to their corporate overlords, right? So in 1980, Lula was there organizing the Workers' Party, okay? Um, so um, Lula held his first political office in <clears throat> 1986 when he was elected to Congress. He has done nothing but work for the government. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying that he has been the government guy, okay? So if you trust Lula, bueno suerte con esto. That means good luck with that. No, it's supposed to be buen suerte con esto. Good luck with that thinking, okay? Um, so um, political parties... He ran for president unsuccessfully three times uh, before being elected in 2002. So from 1989 to 2002, he ran for president three times, okay? And this is where it gets good. In, now, I'm not saying I wasn't there. I didn't diagnose the guy. I'm going to shoot off the mouth for a minute here, okay? Lula, in 2011, was diagnosed with throat cancer, for which he underwent successful chemotherapy. He had been married... I have come up with a lot of people with throat cancer from the transgender stuff, okay? There's something with the hormones that can make people who never had cigarettes get throat cancer. So, Lula is married to a man, okay? And Lula is a short, tiny little woman, which makes sense because you consider Lula's age as what? He's 80 now or something? Well, Lula's age would be he would have been transgendered as a, it, probably in the embryo, right? So, um... They didn't really get into understanding growth hormones until the 1960s. That's when they started trying to push them off on the rest of us. Because if you look at all the early actors, all those early Romans and stuff, they're all very short in statute. That's because they were starting to transgender themselves and they didn't understand growth hormones. Exactly why he's such a short little chaparito. They, they would call him a chaparito. That means a little one. And I'm not saying that all short people are because of hormones. I'm just saying during that era when they were learning to transgender themselves, the people that they transgendered like Lula are not that tall because they did not understand growth hormones. Sure, they got a few of them tall. Like, for example, Vincent Price became very tall, that famous actor. Some of them became very tall, likely because they got too much of the growth hormone, right, when they were just figuring it out. So... If you've ever looked at that kid that plays Donald Trump's child, I mean, geez, they, they, they've growth hormone that kid to the point he's almost looking like a giant, right? So, um, 
he campaigned on reducing the deforestation. Yeah, they probably will cut back on deforestation. But do keep in mind, too, that when you start installing dams and stuff, you have to deforest to get roads to get to the dam, right, to bring the supplies to build the dam. <laughs> so they're probably going to sell this as, now I don't know this for a fact, but they'll probably say, well, you know, I said I was going to protect the deforestation. But look at it this way. We just take out a little bit of the forest for building roads to get the dam to give you electricity. So now all the things you're getting from the forest that I've suggested you get, like the fruits and all that kind of stuff, well, this will be the plan because you'll have electricity from the dam. So you'll not only have water to get more of those tropical fruits to export, see, that's how it'll be sold. So you'll be able to sell those things, right? So let's go ahead and get this dam installed, get your electricity, and everybody will cheer and say, progress is coming, yay, Lula, yay, Lula. And only me will be yelling, hey, peachy cabron, hey, peachy cabron, que paso con su padre? No. Anyway, I have no patience for something like Lula, okay? I have more patience for Bolsonaro, who comes out and says, hey, I'm just a really fucking asshole, okay? I'm just going to screw with everybody. <laughs> I have more respect for that kind of psychopath, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I pulled up a couple of things. Because if you think Lula's not their guy, I got news for you, okay? Um, unfazed by entrenched environmental opposition, a threat of war by local indigenous groups, and celebrity, lo celebrity lobbying by a handful of Hollywood stars, Brazilian President Lula is putting the pedal to the metal on a controversial hydroelectric, hydroelectric project slated for the country's Amazon. Now, he was talking about this back in 27. Is he still thinking about that? Well, I really would know, but since Lula was a... F he installed a pretty big hydroelectric place under his one term as president, so I'm just going to swing a guess here. Lula still has hydro and nuclear on his brain, okay? Because I dug up a thing from 2007. Brazil will increase the use of nuclear energy if it cannot build enough hydroelectric plants, says President Luis Ignacio Lula, said on Thursday in 2007. And this is a quote. We either build the hydroelectric plants we need or will enter the nuclear age, Lula said, during the inauguration of a hydropower plant in central Minas, G-R-A-I-S state. Lula last week split up the Environmental Protection Agency, IBAMA, saying it was too slow in granting operational licenses for infrastructure projects such as hydroelectric plants. So Lula wants to move mountains and earth to get these hydros in there, right? Because everybody is assuming hydros are a good idea. <laughs> okay, right into the trap we go, right? In particular, the government wants to push ahead with two hydro dams on the Amazon basin. The former union leader is also to decide in coming weeks whether Brazil, Brazil will hold a third nuclear energy. Now, I don't really know. I'm gonna guess that Lula's mind is still on nuclear and dams. I'm just taking a guess here, okay? Don't take my word for it, go look for yourself. Uh, because um, there was a, some things I found kind of concerning about this dam business. Um, there is a thing called Brazil relies on dams to generate around 90% of its energy. Every year, Brazil's Ministry of Mines and Energy publishes a decennial plan for energy expansion, which includes the large dams to be completed within the 10-year time horizon. The number of Amazonian dams, I found this, if you want to find some interesting details, head over to the Russian search engine, the index, Y-A-N-D-E-X.com. The number of Amazonian dams listed has steadily declined in the last few plans. A fact that the plans make clear is due to uncertainty about current licensing policies restricting impacts on the environment and or indigenous people. So it has to do with these licensing deals, okay? The most recent plan, and this is very, very critical, okay? The most recent plan, which is for 2020 to 2029, lists only three dams. Tabajero, 
T-A-B-A-J-A-R-O, Trabajero, that's worker. Then Bemquer, B-E-M-Q-U-E-R-E-R. And the other one is called C-A-S-T-A-N-H-E-I-R-A-S. A longer list of dams to be completed after 2029 is also included, but the most controversial dams are not included on it. So, the 2020 to 2029 plan contains an ominous, ominous paragraph on page 264 making clear that unnamed dams could be built depending on the treatment of conservation units, protected areas for biodiversity and indigenous lands. In other words, more and more damaging dams could be built if regulations are changed, as in proposed in bills currently moving through committees in Brazil's National Congress. So this is from 2022 to 2029, a report from Brazil's National Congress, okay, that I dug up, looks to me like all plans are on. The dams, I'm reading from this, continue to read, the dams Brazil plans to build in Peru and Bolivia would have many impacts on the environment and on the people who live along the rivers in these countries. Ironically, they would also have impacts in Brazil itself. There was a study that showed that these planned dams would retain enough sediments to significantly reduce the transport of this valuable material into the Brazilian part of the basin. Nutrients in and associated with these sediments represent the base of the food chain for fish. As a result, the fisheries along the entire length of the Amazon could see reduced production. The fact that Brazil would be shooting itself in the foot by building these dams does not mean that they won't be built. After all, Brazil dammed the Madeira River along with Santos Antonio Dam in 2011 and the Jahari Dam in 2013, thus sacrificing much of what had been the world's second greatest rivery fishery, second only to Mekong, <coughs> excuse me, which is also threatened by, that's Mekong, M-E-K-O-N-G. Fish catches, fish catches plummeted during the two Madeira dams, not only in Brazil, but also in Bolivia and Peru because of the blockage of fish migrations. And then I looked at the one big dam there in Brazil, and it's called the Belo Monte, B-E-L-O Monte, M-O-N-T-E, hydroelectric dam, a concrete colossus on the zinc XINGO River was planned under Lula. Okay, Lula, this is the one that Lula planned, okay? The Belo Monte. And it was built by his successor. Now, wasn't that convenient? So Lula cooked it up, but the successor, which I mentioned earlier, he happened to be friends with <laughs> that he got in office, right? Supporters saw it as a way to generate jobs and add power to Brazil's grid. Evil always has to come package as hell. Always, 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 always. Indigenous populations and environmental campaigners fiercely opposed it, and studies show its impacts have been disastrous. Hmm. I don't know how people do shows and sit there and drink coffee and stuff. Just give me a second here. Okay. Okay, disastrous. Let me get back to disastrous. Um. All you have to do is do the key words, right? If you're going to carry this further from where I've taken you, just do this. Go over to Yandex, Y-A-N-D-E-X dot com, and come up with just different ideas. Say, are dams in Brazil disastrous? <laughs> How many people get murdered by dams in Brazil? Just come up with a bunch of words, right? And just take it for a fly and just see what you come up with. But you'll find a lot of data. <laughs> just be ready, okay? Okay. Um, so it was Beto Monte. Lula and his successor, that woman, right? His, the, I didn't look at this person, but clearly it's probably a man in a wig, right? Okay. 
Indigenous populations and environmental campaigners fiercely opposed it. Results have been disastrous. Civil society organizations estimate tens of thousands of people were displaced, and experts attribute a local surge of violence to lost jobs. One area of concern was the, it's called the XINGO's Volta Grande, or Big Bend, which has lost much of its water. This caused the disappearance of fish, the basis of many indigenous populations' subsistence. So, uh, well, not looking good for Lula now, is it? He was behind that big dam, got, his, got the person after him to see it all the way through. Lula is looking more and more no bueno to me. Okay. Uh, and I already talked about he signed those several decrees and stuff when he got into office. Um, bringing a message that Brazil is back. The fight against global warming. On it. So, uh, th there's this one other article that was from 2013. Hungry for energy, Brazil builds monster dams in the Amazon. It is just never ending now, is it? Who could have guessed that dams would be anything like this? Hot dam, I gotta say. Okay, this article was from 2013. Plan for the, I can't even, XINGU River, a major tributary of the Amazon River, the Belo Monte Dam Project promises to add a staggering megawatts of electricity to Brazil's grid. Once completed, it would be the world's third largest hydroelectric complex after the Three Gorges Dam in China which Brazil shares with neighboring Paraguay. You've got to realize, if you're in surrounding straits to Brazil, states to Brazil, you should be very, <laughs> very concerned, right? Uh, Brazil already boasts South America's largest electricity grid with a total generating capacity. Uh, more energy is needed, however, as Brazil, long a proverbial sleeping giant, tries to live up to its potential as an economic powerhouse. A country that wants to be the fifth biggest economy on the planet within the next decade needs to think five years ahead, and that is why we're doing this, Lula said, ahead of the dam project in April 2011. So, um, and I want to give you a little bit of his background because I actually had a few people write to me and tell me that I was um, mean when I laughed about um, Elon Musk. <laughs> I guess in the show, in the show that I was talking about Elon Musk and his privileged upbringing, but he 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 hid it all behind a saying that he had a bad upbringing, which they all do, right? And because I laughed so hard when Elon Musk claimed he had a bad childhood, I heard from several people who said they also had bad childhoods, and it was highly inappropriate for me to laugh so readily at Elon's abuse as a child, which I replied to them. You obviously haven't followed me for very long because I have laughed like a lunatic at every of their backstories because all of their backstories are totally cooked up to control and make up some reason to make them feel like they're one of us, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. Expect some laughter ahead from me, okay? Because this is the story that I want to tell you about Lula and his so-called background, okay? Okay. His storybook rise from shoeshine <laughs> I'll try not to laugh. Okay. Lula, his storybook rise from shoeshine boy to head of the now governing Patrido is already the stuff of political legend. More recently, he helped Brazil land the 2014 World Cup in 2016 Olympic Games. More feathers in his cap. But observers suggest he would also like to be remembered for helping lift Brazil to new economic heights. He's a lame duck. He's got a few months off left until the election. And he can't succeed himself, so he's worried about his legacy, says this uh, Cornell University person. Some things have worked out for him, and some things haven't. But one of the things that seems to be working for Brazil is that becoming economically more and more a member of the top developed economies club, Lula is really seduced by the prospect of presiding over a cash development program. 
Oh, I bet he is, because all the money will flow directly through Lula's hands. <laughs> Their, their robberies are so easy to pick out if people would just open up those eyeballs and stop letting everybody else be their seeing eye dogs, right? Okay. Luna wants to set the terrain for Dilma, who he'd like to succeed from the Workers' Party. I don't care about that. Um, oh, this is, this, is, this is what I want to tell you about. Okay, the first, the first one that Lula did, right? Belo Monte, okay. Had a pretty big design flaw in it. I'm saying this because I think Lula is no bueno all the way around, okay? So there was a big design flaw, okay? Um, it says, um, but for many both in Brazil and abroad, leftist Lula's backing of the project comes as both a surprise and a major disappointment. Belo Monte is hardly a new idea. Plans to dam the XINGO River have been kicking around since the 1970s when they were first proposed by Brazil's then military government. Always a source of controversy, the idea resurfaced in the 1980s but was eventually scrapped after a high profile opposition camp successfully scared off lenders. See how it's all worked? They were talking about it. So who they bring in? This little guy named Lula, right? Seems leftist, runs the unions, only what's good for the people, right? So here's the deal. There was a design flaw. <clears throat> Shortly before the planned installation of the dam's last and 18th turbine in November of 2019, it was realized that catastrophic failure of the dam was possible due to exposure of an unprotected area of the dam of the dam wall to wave action in the then prevailing low water level. In an October the 11th, 2019 report, the company's CEO requested more water from an intermediate reservoir to add to the dangerously low water supply. Not looking bueno for Lula. Then as now, pressure came from environmental groups, local indigenous communities, and some international celebrities, including British pop star Sting, a key contributor to the late 1980s opposition campaign who is once again voicing his concern about Belo Monte. Other show business figures speaking out against the project are film directors James Cameron and actress Sigourney Weaver, who collaborated on recent blockbuster film Avatar and traveled last month to Brazil to protest alongside indigenous activities, activists. Well, good for them, right? All of the reasons I fought against it 20 years ago are still there. It will destroy an entire river system and destroy the lives and culture of the people who live there and have lived there for thousands of years, said Sting earlier this month. And I really don't know what earlier this month, I think it was like recently, okay, but the 80s they were over there chanting about this is no bueno, right? The project says opponents will wreak havoc on the environment and displace thousands, including some 800 indigenous people living in the direct vicinity. The plan actually involves a pair of large dams and calls for constructing two massive can canals that would divert some 80% of the river's flow to a another reservoir. See, these things get really dangerous. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that Belo Monte, if I were you and you wanted to figure out what's going on a little bit further, I think Belo Monte could be a big problema in the near future, right? And that Belamante is the one that uh, Lula got going, right? So I don't think there's really much more that I have to say here. Indigenous people are getting screwed. They're bringing in, um, bringing in people. They had a lot of opposition under Bolsonaro because Bolsonaro likely came in to clear the rainforest and get all that beef moving, right? And then they brought in a friendlier face called Lula who appears to have a long history with indigenous people on the positive, but my opinion right now is that Lula is there to trick those same indigenous people who think that I read headlines saying things like, we won't survive without Lula. We're glad Lula is back. 
I think a lot of people have put a lot of hero worship into Lula, and I believe it all to be a fat lie. Lula is here for harm, not good. So I'm going to play this song, speaking of these other people, these celebrities, it's called Dancing in the Dark. I think that's what we're doing here until we open those eyes up and stop letting people be in our seeing eye dog. There's still time to stop them in the rainforest. There's still time for all of this stuff. Pick your place on the game board and play it the best you can. <coughs> if you want to find the way, you'll find the way. Trust me. Trust me. You'll find the way. Make your voice heard. Make this life count. This is the final chapter of this game board. What are you going to do? Go down hunkered in the corner? Thank <laughs> you.